Case 19 is a 40 year old with neck swelling and low grade fever. This is going to be the last regular case of Board Review 3. Here you see some images from a contrast enhanced CT of the neck. Here you see just coronal images through the region of the abnormality. Just axial images from a little bit lower at the thoracic inlet. Now here I've given you just a couple of bonus images through the lungs. You can see uh, this is just a soft tissue window on the left here. Here you have some, these are kind of some thick slice MIPS through the lungs with a lung window. So maybe you can see if there's any pulmonary abnormality. Your question A is what is the most likely diagnosis? And your question two is most cases of this condition represent, are you looking at lymphatic spread of malignancy, reactivation of a previous abnormality spread hematogenously, or direct spread of infection through the skin? Now, when you have bilateral necrotic nodes in the neck, you need to have a differential diagnosis because you're not always going to be able to tell the abnormality. Now, the most common thing is going to be a squamous cell malignancy of the head and neck, like most common uh, tonsillar malignancies and things like that. Nasopharyngeal carcinomas can also cause necrotic nodes in the neck. Thyroid cancers can sometimes, although the nodes will, may often be more solid. Now, infection is also a major consideration, right? You can have abscesses, you can have mycobacterial infection or scrofula, and uh, you can also have lymphoma. Now, lymphoma nodes are infrequently necrotic like this, although after treatment, they can become centrally necrotic. Uh, this is a case of mycobacterial lymphadenitis. Uh, this case had multiple cervical masses. Now they were larger on the left. They can be hard or they can be fluctuant. Like frequently they don't have as much pain. The risk factors for this are IV drug use or immunocompromise. Endemic areas uh, such as Africa and India like have more TB. Uh, so you can often see that more commonly there. Less than 50% are gonna have abnormalities in the chest. And the treatment for this is uh, anti-TV therapy or antimicrobacterial therapies. Now in CT, what you'll often see is these confluent enlarged nodes with central low density. You will have fewer inflammatory changes than if you have like a pyogenic abscess, like a staph infection. But you'll see more, you'll see more inflammatory changes with a pyogenic infection. The MR findings are going to be very similar. And uh, this is also known as scrofula, and uh, this was called the king's evil. And uh, then it was thought that only the royal touch of the king could cure you of this uh, scrofula. This patient turned out to have mycobacterium kansasi, which is an alternate uh, mycobacterial infection. Uh, they had a very specific immune deficiency, and uh, they needed a stem cell transplant ultimately to deal with that. Uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis has a very similar appearance to this. So for this practical purpose, you can think of them as interchangeable. Now here, I've just given you a couple of images through the lung, so you can kind of see that. You see the necrotic appearing uh, nodes are extending into the upper chest here. But a nice clue for you here is these tree and bud uh, abnormalities in the upper lungs here. That's pretty typical for uh, mycobacterial infection. Uh, most of these cases represent reactivation of previous uh, infection. So you've had tuberculosis at a previous time in your life, and then you get reactivation. So it's a secondary uh, secondary thing. Um, if you had a malignancy, that would be the lymphatic spread. Um, most of the time, skin infections don't extend deep like this, so you wouldn't typically have such severe lymphadenopathy from skin infection.